Okay, so I forgot I wanted to make a video on how to replace the LCD, and I just took mine off. But um, I want to explain how that works right now. All right, so your LCD that hasn't been taken off yet is going to be stuck on, soldered on, right there. Let's see if I can get this to focus. It's going to be soldered on right there, and to remove it, you're going to need to apply heat with a heat gun or soldering iron to here and you're going to slowly want to peel it up you can only peel it up if this solder here is nice and melted otherwise you're going to rip the pads off the board underneath you can't do that so just apply heat and slowly peel up apply heat and slowly peel it up okay again this is just another quick demonstration with my heat gun here you slowly apply heat only to that little contact area slowly apply heat and at the same time with tweezers or maybe you can grab the LCD and pull up start on one end and start peeling it off you would just start peeling it off peeling 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 and hopefully you got it off without uh, ripping anything so this would be junk now so next you're gonna be left with this little contact strip that you're gonna need to pre tin I was halfway through doing it which is why some of those are bridge connections but I'm gonna do it again so what you're gonna need to do is take your flux some no clean electrical solder flux cover it get a nice layer of that on here and then uh, use your soldering iron with maybe a flat tip and just uh, carry it with a little bit of solder on the tip carry it over all the pads making sure that they all have a nice coat of solder on them right, it's going to be kind of hard doing this with one hand but there's the flux got a little bit of solder on the tip of my soldering iron And I'm not really touching the contacts. Alright, maybe this will be a little bit of an angle. Alright, so once it's like that, what I'm going to go do is grab an alcohol pad and some paper towels and clean that off. So here's what that looks like <clears throat> after tinning and cleaning. Just make sure each one of those pads has a nice little bit of uh, solder on there. And I'm going to go get the LCD. And this here is the LCD I bought. I got this for 30 bucks on eBay and I have another cluster with one of these in it and um, it would be nice to uh, have the OEM but um, this works just fine um, so let me uh, show you where this one goes an issue I noticed with these uh, LCDs is that um, they don't line up See, like. Here. This screen is in place here, but the ribbon is a little off to the side. So that's for some reason how they are, I guess. So I don't put the LCD in in the 
where it goes first. I first um, line this up and I'm going to use my soldering iron to put a little bit of solder just on one of the corners like right here to hold it in place while I do the rest. I'm going to show you that right now. Alright, as you can see here, I tacked on these few connectors on the end just to hold the rest of them in place when it's lined up. And oh, there it goes, it's on my finger. So they do all line up. Might be off just a tiny bit, but they line up for the most part. And then for this, Flux is your friend. I would say order some high quality, no clean electrical solder flux and just get a nice gloop of it on there and it pretty much lets the solder go to where it needs to go and you're gonna see right now I'm gonna see if I can record and um, solder the, this, these down alright so with a little bit of solder on the tip of my iron here I'm just gonna come on focus there it goes. I'm just gonna press down gently and bring the iron across all these contacts. Alright, so sometimes it might take a few passes to get them lined up. I'm looks like I got it on the first go. Yeah, it looks like I got it. And you just want to make sure that those are all flush, connected, there aren't any bridges. If you use enough flux, it should be fine. I'm just going to wipe this down. Alright, so you remember how I told you the LCD sits kind of crooked? Yeah, this is what it looks like. So, haven't had any issues just putting it into place and having a slight bend down there. That shouldn't, um, that shouldn't bother it at all. Alright, so there's the LCD in place. And I'm going to reassemble the cluster. Alright, with the cluster back together, we're going to see how we did. In case you were wondering, this is what the connectors look like on the back of the cluster. The way these works are, they're going to be closed like this, clicked. I'm not going to click it now because they're a bitch to open. But you see that little, little pop-up thing here? you can push that down a little bit so that's gonna hold this little lever in place you push it down and with a fingernail pry this up at the same time it'll unlock as you push it up it'll push the connector out of from where it should be so this is how I'm gonna plug it in when I put it in the connector slide it down lock and you're gonna have to do this all by feel because you know, you can't really see anything. And there's three of them. One, two, three. All right, let me hook it up. All right, so it's moment of truth. Let's see how we did.
Yeah, there it is. So there it is. New LCD screen. And of course you can tell um, I've changed the colors of the needles to blue and that thing is white now. I'm still playing around with the colors and the back plates but so far much progress done on my uh, slightly custom cluster. So yeah, I'm gonna post videos on how to take it out, how to disassemble it, but I thought I'd first get a video of um, the actual soldering of the LCD screen. All right, I'm just gonna point out that I got it on the first go, but I've done like six of these already and I'm pretty good with soldering. You might not, so if um, if you plug in your screen and it doesn't work, take it back and hold it up to the light where that solder, where those little pins are. And with the light, you can see, with the light behind it, you can see if there aren't, if there are any pins that aren't fully lined up and you can make adjustments. Uh, also a pro tip, um, taking the cluster in and out might actually, if you're not careful, might kind of scratch this soft touch shit off yeah and right here I can show you the difference between this $30 eBay cluster and what this the OEM would look like you see how it's uh, bright orange pretty much around the sides um, whatever is not letters or numbers it's bright orange compare that to the LCD on the radio you see how it's a darker, darker red? Let me see if I can change the light setting. See that darker red? And we go to this bright orange. So that's one difference I have noticed with this. Uh... It, it's fully clear. I don't know what the phone is doing. Like, there's nothing wrong with the screen. The phone is acting up but anyway um, that's a difference again the screen is perfect it's the phone and its exposure that's messing up there's a difference here's what it looks like with the boost gauge in place I think that looks pretty cool.